Happy Saturday to you. I'm saying that hesitatingly because today to me it's Friday and I'm getting a late start today because I've, if you notice my shop is pretty empty right now because I moved some things out. What I'm trying to do is <clears throat> use this as a multi-purpose space so I'm using it as a home gym right now too since I can't make it to the gym. Usually I, I go to the gym six days a week. And so what I have, if you guys are you know interested in a space saving, Kind of thing are these Bowflex uh, dumbbells? See, they don't take up any space because you just dial in, you know, whatever weight you want over here, and then they come up like that. So it's a really cool way to kind of stay in shape, and it definitely helps to be able to move things out here. Then I can set up my mat and do a complete workout in here. One of the things I was thinking about doing this weekend is making some sort of a pull-up bar. I know Ben over at uh, Homemade Modern made like a chin-up pull-up bar and I thought it looked pretty cool. I might try making something like that just to, since I don't have access to all of that gym equipment. And I think this is just gonna be more, increasingly more important for us to try to stay healthy while we're at home. I think the temptation is to start eating more and just grazing all day long and we're most likely sitting around a lot of the day so as much as you can try to get up and move around so as it turns out in my quick calculations on Monday for how much lumber I would need I didn't have I didn't get quite enough to make the doors luckily you know I've got some scrap boards lying around and I had this complete board so I can easily split this in two and that should be just enough to make the doors when I set up this mobile biter station earlier this week, a couple of people asked me if I have plans for it, and I do, but they're part of my weekend workshop course, and we're gonna be relaunching that course here uh, next month, as if everything goes according to plan. I'm still a little bit up in the air right now, but once we relaunch it, it'll be open permanently to so anybody can join. I think it's a great project, but stay up to date with everything, just go over to theweekendworkshop.com and you can get on the mailing list over there. Okay, so here's a really dumb thing. I don't have a proper fitting for my shop vac. I, I could get one, but I've just been so lazy, I've never bothered to do it. So <laughs> I have this one, which fits onto like my Craig jig and a couple of other things. And what I have to do when I want to use it here is I just duct tape it to the... <laughs> to the dust port of my saw. Yeah. There, fixed it. And honestly, I really like this Ryobi miter saw. It works out fine, but that's the one thing about it that I don't like is the dust collection is really bad on it. Even when I do have it hooked up properly and still sawdust goes everywhere. So it's not the best. I even had to make a little scoop over here out of duct tape to just try to funnel in some of that sawdust, but it is a really inexpensive saw. So here I'm just setting up a stop block. I'll cut the styles for the door first and then the rails. See, look at all that dust. It's all over the floor. I mean, it's a little bit better with the shop vac hooked up to it, but it's not the best. Now I can use that same attachment on my, on my Craig jig, but it fits perfect on there. If you do have one of these Craig jigs, definitely use that shop vac attachment. Oh my gosh, it works so well on this. It just, it pretty much scoops up almost 100% of the dust. So I'll make these exactly the same way as I did those side frames. I'll just keep these a little bit offset so that I can route out the middle. Ugh. I just did that backwards. I don't want the pocket screws on the style on the styles. I want them on the on the rails up here. No, at least I caught it at the beginning. I only have two. <laughs> yeah, I guess I can just fill those up. I'll just patch them. That's all. Okay, back on track now.
You know what I did? I just cut another board rather than patch up those pocket holes. <laughs> hey, you gotta be able to just live it up a little bit, right? <laughs> it's a, it's a, I'm a party animal. So this is that aluminum sheet that I want to put inside of those rabbits and I'm just trying to figure out how I want to cut this. Aluminum is a soft metal and you can easily cut it using any woodworking tools and it won't harm them at all. The problem with this is that it's just so thin that it poses different problems. If I were to use my table saw, it's real likely that this would just slide underneath the rip fence and I wouldn't get a really good straight cut. I could mount this to a board, maybe with carpet tape or something, but then peeling it up, it's likely to just bend. Another problem with using the table saw is just keeping it flat. If I'm trying, if I was to run this through the blade, it's probably gonna chatter a lot and it's gonna wanna do this. So it would be kind of difficult to keep that running flat. So I think what I'm gonna try to do is just <laughs> cut it with scissors. I think it'll work, it's pretty thin. Another thing I might try is holding it down on there with some epoxy. But I don't have any epoxy. I know, I know, everybody has gallons and gallons of the stuff these days, but I just need a little, a little bit. But we'll see how those points work out first. But I don't want to attach those yet because I still need to finish everything and then I'll put those on. I'm gonna use these overlay hinges on the doors. These are my absolute favorite type of hinge to use because they're really easy to mount. You don't have to worry about getting it squared up or anything, and you don't need a latch because they just snap shut like that. So this flat side of the hinge here fits on the back of the door like that. This one is really close to that rabbit there, but and it kind of overhangs a little bit. I should have probably thought about that and maybe used wider boards, maybe two inch boards, but I was trying to save some lumber on this. So I think I could just put them on there just like that and it'll be okay. This is also one of those things that I don't really have any particular rule about where to set hinges. I don't know, there might be some sort of standard or, or something, I don't know, so I just kind of, Set them up there to see about what looks right, and I think that'll do. One thing to keep in mind when you're installing hinges, they always come with screws, but a lot of times there's two different kinds of screws, and so you wanna make sure that you don't mix those up. So these shorter ones will go into this piece, and then the longer ones will go into the part that goes on the cabinet. Sometimes the heads are different. In fact, they probably are on this one too. Yeah, this one has a little bit of a pan head. It's rounded and this is more of a flat head to go on here. Then once I get the doors positioned on the cabinet, I just like to clamp it into place and then screw it in. And this is where those longer screws go. I've taken the doors off so that I can fill these pocket holes with these plugs. Unfortunately, I don't have any pine plugs. All I have are oak. So it's just gonna add a little bit of character to the back side of these doors. If you're wondering what I'm doing with this, this is one of those like portable Craig pocket hole jigs. But on the back side here, it has a little indentation there and that's for pushing these plugs in place. Okay, I think I'll just let those dry and then I'll come out here in the morning and might as well just sand everything down nice and smooth. And I still wanna add these shelves in here, but getting real close to being done here. See you tomorrow.